Welcome to Kronos Gaming. In today's video, we'll go over boosting your FPS and performance in Hell Let Loose. If you ever had a potato computer, then you know all too well what a mere 20 FPS, let alone even bigger increase means. So let's get to it. I've been slacking to do this as well. The specs of my PC can be found in the video description. My FPS at everything maximum settings is over 75 on most maps and slightly less on some other poorly optimized maps like Mortain or Stalingrad. So let's see what we end up with. Maybe we can get an explosive increase in FPS. If you got an NVIDIA graphics card, then you probably have the GeForce Experience application, but it might not be the most latest release. So first of all, let's upgrade that to the new NVIDIA app that you can find here. This link is in the description as well. And download it and install it if you already haven't, as it offers way more features than the GeForce experience you might have had before. First, go to the drivers section on the left side and make sure your drivers are up to date. If it offers an update, then install it. It's crucial we keep our drivers up to date to keep the performance stable, compatible, and with good performance. With the latest update in the NVIDIA app, you can automatically overclock your GeForce GPU with a simple click. What's cool about this is that they've said that automatic tuning will not damage your GPU or invalidate its warranty. So there is no risk of damage. So you can forget about going out of your way to trying to overclock your system to get the performance boost you are after. Next, close all your GPU intensive applications that hog up the system resources just in case, those being games, other apps and browsers. Then click on automatic tuning to scan your PC as the app finds the best overclock settings for your GPU and maintains that performance on a regular basis. Be advised that this can take 10 to 20 minutes and it's recommended to leave your system unattended during the process for the best results. So I will do all the steps with you. So let's take a look what it is once we are done. As you can see, we are up 152 megahertz and 200 megahertz, which is a pretty conservative overclock and the results may vary depending on the PC that you have. For some PCs and games, the overclocking may not be suitable as it may make the experience a bit unstable. Fortunately for that, we have the restore button to revert this. So if you do test it out and it does not work for you, then you can revert the change. But if you can notice positive changes, then of course keep the setting on. Now let's move on to the graphics settings and go over the global settings. Starting off, we got the RTX Digital Vibrance, which essentially makes your games visually cleaner, brighter and overall more rich. But this is a personal preference thing, so test it out to see if you like it or not. Personally, I'm keeping it off. CUDA GPUs, I only have one, but if you have more than one, then choose the most powerful one. So I'm going to leave it as is. Image scaling, basically an upscaling technology that has a sharpening filter. The FPS boost might be noticeable, but the trade-off is that you will have this grainy visual, depending how you put it. I like to use a little bit as it can help distinguish some objects from another. Low latency mode. This setting can remove the rendering unit between CPU and GPU, which removes one latency step from you clicking your mouse to it reaching your display. Essentially, this helps you connect your targets a little bit better, so I recommend turning this on. There is also an ultra option, but I noticed very, very small FPS drops with that one, so I'll keep the setting as on, which is probably best for most people as it's on the middle ground. If you have a G-Sync compatible monitor, which I don't have, then you will see an additional setting here of which you have to make sure is correctly configured on your end and then choose the G-Sync compatible option which should give you a minor latency improvement. Power management mode, recommended to keep it as normal. For the other setting, prefer maximum performance. Various testings have shown that it does not do much other than just increase the power usage when attempting to get maximum performance. So just leave it as is. Then we have shader cache size. This setting compiles shaders that your game uses for later use. So essentially the larger the shader cache, the less your game has to regenerate shaders. That in result should improve the overall performance. There is a whole array of options while the setting is on default at normal. Many people use 10 gigabytes as it might remove stuttering and improve load times. I have it on 10 gigabytes as well. Vertical sync we're gonna turn off and virtual reality setting is off as well. Now let's optimize the Windows 2 
there are five simple things and they are very quick to do. These will have a minor effect, but is recommended to do. First of all, let's tap the Windows key and type command, then click run as administrator. Once open, type sfc slash scan now, which is a command that will scan all protected system files and replace corrupted files with a cached copy. Let it run in the background as it will do everything for you. All you need to do is just restart later. Next, tap the Windows key and go to settings and type in storage settings. Since I'm using Windows 10, as I don't like the new Windows 11, my interface might be slightly different from yours. But the main thing here is to put your storage sense on and set it to run every day and delete the files in the bin after every 14 days. This will make Windows regularly clean after yourself in a reasonable time. Next thing, type game bar in the settings and turn it off as it consumes quite a bit of memory in the background. Then type game mode and tap that one on as it prevents Windows Update from performing driver installations and sending restart notifications when you play and it may slightly improve your frame rate as well. Next, search for offline maps in the settings. Make sure your meter connection is turned off alongside map updates. Don't need to download these in the background. Now to the task manager. So control alt delete and let's open it. Focus will be on booting the PC. Go to startup and disable applications that do not need to be started when you're booting up by right clicking and disabling them. This may seem like a small thing, but I know for a fact that some of you may have loads of applications that start when a PC boots. And let's be honest, most of them are not necessary. That's it for the Windows optimization. Now let's get back to Hell Let Loose settings. Go to Steam Library, right click your Hell Let Loose and choose Properties. Go to Installed Files and verify the game's integrity. Sometimes people experience crashes or missing textures in the game and this can help with that. It's completely normal for some files to fail to verify as they are local configuration files that should not be replaced as a part of this process. So you can safely ignore this message if you get it. Then open the properties again and put DX12 use all available cores in the launch options. Many people from the community have reported that enabling DirectX 12 via launch will have a notable effect on the overall performance. If you want to copy that, I will put it in the description of this video. Now let's check your monitor settings. Press the Windows key, search for display and find the advanced display settings. Here you can see your monitor's refresh rate and down in the list you can double check if it's at the maximum it can be. For some reason in Hell at Loose your refresh rate in game may not match that with your monitor. So to fix that we can press the Windows key, go to local disk where the game directory is, go to users, that's me. Now you might need to select the view from the top and tick the hidden box icon so we can see and access the app data folder. Click that, then local, find HLL, Hello Loose, then saved, config, Windows no editor, right click on the game user settings any and untick the read only, then open it with your regular notepad, find the frame rate limit and apply the hertz you saw at your display settings. For a lot of people here is some other random number but should be your display's frame rate. Write it there, file, save, close it, open its properties again and tick the read only box so the game won't overwrite your adjustments. When booting the game you will see those intro videos every time. Some people might find this annoying. If you want to get rid of them and load straight into the main menu, then go to Steam Library, right click Hell at Loose Properties, Installed Files, Browse, HLL, Content, Movies, and delete everything you have here. If any big future update comes, these will reappear, so you might have to repeat this step in the future. Now let's load up the Hell at Loose and let's tweak the in-game settings. These are not universal, so you are best to check them out in practice range, for example. Firstly, go to Options and Gameplay. Put the dead body despawn delay to half a minute. This will burden your system the least and is the best to keep it that way. Remember that this will also inform you where the recent firefight has taken place. FOV or Field of View. Raise that as much as you can, but too little or too much can feel weird. My sweet spot is 100. It defines how far to the sides and top slash bottom 
you can see the surrounding world. Some even have it at 120, but I feel like see it from Ice Age when I put it that much. If you have, for example, an ultra wide display, then you don't need to tweak it too much. 110 at most, but 100 is fine. Reducing it to, for example, 90 can slightly reduce the required frames that need to be rendered. So pick whatever is best for you. Then go to options, video, and choose the screen mode. I use windowed full screen with 100% scaling as I like to tap in and out of game at times. Keep your resolution the same size as your monitor. Brightness, I keep it at 125% in daylight maps. Tweak it to 150% at dawn or dusk and 200% at nighttime because that helps with overall visibility. Trust me, bro. Then let's move to VSync. Turn that off. This may give you input lag if turned on, so safe to just keep it off. Then we have the anti-aliasing method. There are five of these settings. I personally use Community TAA. I will show you them in order. This is Community TAA. This is No TAA. This is FX AA. This is Standard TAA. And this is Clarity TAA. So you can probably tell why I'm using Community TAA. It just looks really good. Then we have the Shadow Quality. If you are struggling with FPS, then Set it as low as you can. There are lots of shadows in this game that need to be rendered, so you can greatly reduce that load. I keep mine at high. Then we have the texture quality. I like having this at epic. Can eat some performance power, but to have the most visually pleasing game, I recommend to keep it as high as possible for the best experience. Then we have the effects quality. This doesn't eat like a whole lot of resources, so feel free to keep it as high as you can. I have it on Epic. Then we have the view distance. This plays a very large part on your FPS. The higher it is, the more stuff needs to be rendered and the more your computer's resources used. Lower view distances are completely playable. So if you want to get slightly higher FPS, then you can tone this one down. I like having this on high. I haven't found the Epic to be that much more useful. Then we have the foliage. There is a lot of foliage in this game that needs to be rendered. So this is a very resource heavy setting. If you are struggling with FPS, then put it as low as possible. I've gotten used to having it on medium, but of course the higher it is, the more immersive the game feels. So test it out for yourself. Post-processing quality doesn't really do much and has a very minor impact on your resources. So keep it whatever is comfortable for you. I have it on Epic. SSAO, turn this one off. If you have it on, it gives nothing good and it just eats up your FPS. Next, we have motion blur. I've seen some people have it on for more immersion. I keep it off. It makes your life a lot easier if you want to quickly locate the enemies. Now head over to the audio quality. These are my settings that my ears are comfortable with. You can turn the audio quality lower if you wish, but there won't be much performance gain to be expected from here. Quick side note here is that when I'm playing Armor Squad, for example, my SFX volume is at 20% because that tank is so damn loud. And when I'm playing Infantry, then it's at 60%. And the unit leadership and proximity volume set as you prefer. Sometimes the command chat or team chat can be very loud and distract your gameplay. So then you can just turn it down a notch. Sometimes your microphone might not be working in the game. So to troubleshoot it, first make sure it's plugged in. I've sometimes had it unplugged. If you are certain it's plugged in, then just click check. Make sure your devices are correct and the volume is appropriate and then click OK. And to restart your mic and hell it loose, just click disconnect and connect. This may require multiple attempts. Unfortunately, some people still experience this and this is a common problem that unfortunately has not been fixed completely and some people still experience it. So this should resolve your microphone problems if you have any. I hope you find this guide helpful. Please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. My goal is to hit 1k subscriptions by the end of the year. 
Thank you all for the continuous support. And if you have any questions or comments, then feel free to drop a comment and I'll respond to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the battlefield.